Hey guys, hope everybody's having a great day. Um, today I am reviewing the Wingsung 601. And this pin here specifically is in the transparent um, color. You'll notice at the top it's got a uh, silver cap. So when you look at this pin, obviously, you know, you look at the clip and you look at the body and the style of the pin, you, you can compare it to a Parker pin. And most notably, I would say um, for most people, like a Parker 51 uh, would be a, a decent comparison. Obviously, the, the filling mechanism is basically a vacuum style filling. Um, this one is, is a little bit different, and I have another 601 with the other filling style that actually has the uh, diaphragm. This one has more of a, a kind of piston, and I will say that it's a very efficient filling style. Um, and I'll get more into this back part here in a moment, but kind of starting, you know, just to look at the pen itself. I, I like this little touch at the top. You've got kind of a, almost a pearl -esque type uh, cap finial. Obviously it is a plastic material, it's nothing special, but I think it's a nice touch to the pen. You'll notice you've got your um, kind of band there as well. And then you've got your arrow style clip also. Um, and the clip is, um, it definitely is springy, um, really easy to use. It goes in and out of shirt pockets very well and uh, works well. The cap is kind of uh, texturized a little bit, kind of like a brushed uh, a steel look. Um, and, I, and again, I kind of like the touch. It's not... Um, Fingerprint heavy. It's not a fingerprint magnet like a lot of uh, uh, caps that are like a stainless steel material. Then moving down towards the bottom, you see that it says made in China. Um, and then over here, we've got some Chinese markings. And then you have the brand 60, or I'm sorry, the model number 601. Uh, moving down the actual pen again, this is a translucent body. You'll see here you've got your actual filling mechanism here in the back side with your blind cap. I like the fact that they went with a clear blind cap to really kind of show off all of the mechanism and how everything works. I think that's kind of a cool touch versus doing, say, a, a blacked out or a different colored blind cap. Um, and it easily screws off and then it reveals that... Um, lever there um, and again this is going to be very similar to what you would see in a parker vacuumatic as far as just the how it works and the form and function the difference with this one is it kind of has a regular piston mechanism here versus having the rubber diaphragm there's a lot of advantages to that i've noticed that this is much more efficient on filling the pin for one you're not going to sit there and have to press and decompress this lever here um, several times to get the pin to fill. I think I was able to get a full fill on this pin with about three full presses. Whereas with a rubber diaphragm or the traditional vacuumatic filling system, it usually takes several presses to get a full fill, fill on your uh, pin. Um, the other neat thing is, is this is something that can easily be removed and cleaned if you needed to. Um, so that's something else. If you're somebody that likes to tinker with pins, play around with them, it's something that you can move and um, mess around with and clean as well. Now this is it's just, just a pull-off cap. It comes straight off and it reveals that uh, section. The, the nice thing, it's very similar to a lot of those Parker models, uh, such as the 51, 45, and, and so forth, is it, you know, it tapers straight down, but there's a lot of places you can hold this section. So if you're someone that likes to hold it up high, you're, it really isn't going to bother you. You have no uh, barrel threads to worry about. So you can hold it in several different spots. The other nice thing about the pin is it's not a super small pin. It's not very girthy, but it's got decent length to it. Um, the dimensions of the pin, when capped, are about five and a half inches capped, five inches uncapped, and then a, a six inches when you post it. Um, and it's it does come a little bit back heavy. If you're someone that likes to post your pins, it is a little bit back heavy. I mean, I can fill it, but I'm also someone that does not typically post my pins. So it's probably more noticeable for me. Um, 
one really cool thing is is you have a clear feed, which I think is a really cool touch because then depending upon what type of ink you're using, it just looks really neat. Um, it, it's it just it's nice to look at. You see all that ink inside of the translucent uh, plastic, but then also that feed turns the same color as your ink. I think it's a really really cool touch. Um, you'll see that um, hooded nib, obviously. Um, now you can completely take off um, this uh, section here and remove the nib, the feed, and everything. So when you clean it, um, it definitely you can remove everything. I've noticed that with the um, rubber diaphragm model, that actually kind of makes it a little bit easier to clean. Anyone that has had to clean um, vacuumatics knows how sometimes how long it, it seems like you're cleaning the pen for an eternity, so to speak, because um, you're just sitting there pressing, pressing, expel water, press, press, more water, expel, and it just seems like it's a never-ending process. So that is a nice touch with the pen. Um, so, you know, overall, I think the design of this pen is 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 very classic, but it, it they put definitely a modern touch to this pen, and it's a really... I really like the pen. Just looking at it, it's a nice design. Um, I will review, I have another one that I will review that is actually the diaphragm model um, or the rubber diaphragm model and, and I'll review that one at a later time. Um, I'm gonna do some quick uh, sizing comparisons with the pen and then we'll move on to a writing sample next. So here we can see it um, up against some other pins. So starting from the bottom, we have our Pilot Metropolitan. Um, obviously we have our Wingsung 601. We have a Parker 51 here, and then our Lamy Safari there. You'll notice that it, it can hold its own as far as length against all these pins. Um, again, it's not a very girthy pin. Um, it's about the same in length as my Parker 51, uh, maybe just a hair sh longer. Um, but it is a little bit skinnier than my Parker 51, so it doesn't have as much in the girth department. Um, but definitely a, a decent size pen that I think would be nice for just about any uh, size hand, so to speak. Now here you can see the pens um, uncapped. So again, you know, it, it's a decent size pen. It holds its own. Um, you know, obviously the pen styles here between the, the Parker and the Wingsung, it, it's made to mimic that design. So very, very similar, um, even down to this uh, metal ring here to separate the uh, section from the barrel. Um, very, very uh, similar design. Um, and again, you know, a little bit longer than our uh, Pilot Metropolitan, um, very close to the Lamy Safari, and just again a hair longer than the uh, Parker 51. And just so for those of you that like to post your pens, again, one last sizing comparison between the four models or between the four pens. Um, so that way you can kind of see the differences in sizes from a posting perspective. Um, up next, we're going to do a writing sample. I'll talk a little bit more about the nib and, and what I like and don't like about it, as well as the price of the pen. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, guys, we are back now for the writing sample. Um, and as stated before, as you guys know, this is the Wing Sung. Six oh one, and I would definitely say this is an extra fine nib. Um, the ink that I am using is—I'll um, actually show you guys. This is an ink that I really am enjoying. I've used it in a few pen reviews now. So this is uh, from the Birmingham Pen Company, Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. I really like the color of this ink. Definitely go check it out. Uh, Birmingham pen inks are very um, inexpensive. Now the first thing you'll notice about this, this nib is it, it's a consistent writer. And even though it's an extra fine nib, um, I would say that 
you know, it's it's a little on the wet side for an extra fine. I mean, So there is our writing sample. So this is not a pen that you are going to be getting uh, a tremendous amount of line variation, uh, really none at all. Um, again, we'll do a little bit of a, a wetness test. Again, this is an extra fine nib, um, but you know, a decent, for an extra fine, it's a decent wet writer. Um, I do notice this pen does have a little bit of, uh, it does have a sweet spot. Um, and you'll really notice that if you, someone that already owns this pen, it has a sweet spot. It's not a pen that I would be doing a lot of reverse writing. It's very scratchy if you're somebody that likes to do that. Um, it can do it, but this pen definitely has a sweet spot, like a lot of hooded nibs. Um, one really nice thing about this pen I've noticed, this is not a bad pen for, for work purposes. And, and, and the reason why I say that is I'm actually, I actually enjoy using this pen at work because I can use it on all sorts of different paper types because of the nib. Um, I can use it on copy paper, cheap paper, post-it notes, just about anything. And it, it really, it doesn't feather too much because it does write with a very fine line. Um, and it has consistent ink flow, but it's not just, you know, a gusher. And it works well, and I've noticed that even with my other 601 that I own. So I would say it's, I would say it's somewhat consistent from what I can see, and also the reviews that I've watched already. So if you're looking for a pen, maybe that's not extremely expensive, this pen is going to cost you anywhere. But I've seen them as low as ten dollars up to I think fifteen, depending upon what eBay or you buy it from. I think I paid around that price, and I'll put the uh, ebay link for this pen in the description um but again i think it's a good pen this would be a great pen to use for work um i even use this purple ink in mine and i, I like the way it works so you know not a huge fan of extra fine nibs um, but this one it performs and it does a good job there's not a lot of things i don't like about this pen it, you know i mean i wish it had a little bit you, because it's a hooded nib, granted it is a clear um, pen or transparent pen, that the one, only annoyance that I honestly have is the fact that it does have that sweet spot. But that's something that you have to deal with with hooded nibs. And one other thing is you just have to be a little bit aware when you pull this cap off. I have sometimes almost ripped it off. And um, I have had ink, of course, expel, you know, not dramatically, but a couple drops here and there. And, you know, obviously it's something you probably don't want to happen at work. So just be aware of that. Um, if you're in a hurry and I just literally sometimes just rip it off, then ink will kind of uh, spray out. Um, most of us are, of course, aware of that, but that's about it, guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the uh, review. Um, definitely leave some comments down below if you already own one of these. Let us know what you think about your pen. Um, and if you are thinking about getting one, let us know. There's so many different colors that these guys are offered. Let us know what color you're thinking about getting. And uh, until next time, guys, uh, take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.